We're on a race against time for this next tree. I'm looking for the elder Sambucus nigra. The reason why it's a race is because although it's late January, the elder is already starting to bud. So I'm gonna see if I can find some winter buds that still haven't sprung out that we can show you. The elder is the first tree in the woods to uh, come into leaf. It's a short shrubby tree. And the reason why it comes into leaf first is because if it doesn't come into leaf early, it's gonna get shaded out by the canopy of trees above it. So it takes that early opportunity to get as much photosynthesizing in as it can. Let's see if we can find some. Okay, so we found an elder and actually there's plenty in this woodland forming a really good understory. And you can see here, I said it's late January and this one's already bursting into leaf. Now it's very distinctive, the elder. First of all, it's opposite. Can we see the opposite buds here and here? And obviously just under this main one here. So it's one of the few opposite natives that we've got for the buds. Also, these buds are kind of distinctive, kind of pinky purple here. You can see at this time of year before it spreads out into the greener leaf. Now looking at the bigger picture, the elder, as I said, is a bit of a shrubby tree. And think of it as a very messy tree. There's nothing neat about the elder. You've got shoots sprouting out all over the place and intertwining and interlocking with each other as well. What you also see a lot of as well in the new growth is those straight shoots coming up. Here we've got an example of an elder that is multi-stemmed, quite straight growth on it, lots of new shoots coming up. And this one's interesting because we can get a look at some older elder bark. That's a mouthful. And there it is, very fissured and cracked, but quite distinctive and good to see as a comparison to the other elders we've been looking at. There's some damage to the bark here as well which is interesting to see. More of those straight shoots coming up to the sky. Very distinctive of elder. What we've got here in the woodland is a stand of elder forming quite a solid understory. And uh, the elder will easily multi-stem. So never think of the elders having always just one single trunk. I wanted to stop at this elder here that's been uh, coppiced down. This is a really good example of the hollow stem that I mentioned earlier that Elder has. You can see here where the hollow spongy pith has actually rotted away and left two holes. This is, I suspect, where higher up in the tree, two stems would have forked off like that. But here at the base of the stool, they're kind of fused together. It's a really good example there. You can see the Elder has been coppiced and it's throwing out all these new shoots and it's gonna come back with new life. Here's an example of one of those young straight shoots coming out here from some diagonal growth. And unlike the older bark, which is more fissured, this bark is smoother underneath, but then has these prominent spots all over it. And you can see the growth each year of the elder and each new bud quite clearly. And traditionally, these elder shoots were used for fire by friction for creating fires using a hand drill. Looking down at the base of the tree, you can see where that smooth bark of the young shoots with age is going into fissures right along the bark here. And actually there's a really good uh, test you can do to uh, check that it's the elder. The bark has a very corky feel to it. If you push it with your thumb, it will give. very distinctive of elder. Naturally, elder wood is not a strong timber wood by any means. Um, it's actually hollow on the inside. There's a hollow pith right in the center of it, which actually means it's been great in the past for making whistles out of it or even pea shooters. What we've got here is something that also is very distinctive of the elder tree. And you see these here, some of them look like fallen leaves, but it's actually a fungus called jelly ear fungus. And it very much grows on uh, elder. 
on dead elder particularly, but it also grows on dead sycamore, I've found it too. And uh, this jelly ear fungus is actually an edible. It doesn't look very appetizing, and I can tell you it's not. It doesn't really taste of anything, but it's a easy to identify fungus that you can uh, use to add to uh, soups and stews to bulk it out. Whether there's any nutritional value or not, I'm not sure. If I pick one of these jelly ear fungus, you'll see where the ear in its name comes from. I'm not sure I could serve that up on a plate unless perhaps I chopped it up. Further down the trunk, we've got um, some jelly ear fungus which are lighter velvety um, brown and uh, are quite squishy. Then you've got these darker ones here which are a little bit dry, a little bit more crispy. That's due to moisture. There's a good test you can do. If you take a fresh jelly ear fungus and leave it out in the home, it will dry up and it will go crispy and black. But then if you put it back in a cup of water, it will quickly rehydrate and swell to its full size. So imagine you could harvest these when they are dry. Um, and then when you want to use them for cooking, you could just throw them in the soup or stew and they would swell, hopefully taking a bit of the flavors. One thing I would say with any um, uh, fungi is that Although I'm saying these are edible, always make sure that you've got the right species, and that goes for any fungi. Um, although these are very distinctive and don't really look like anything else, it's always best to make sure you've got the right species. And if you're not 100% sure, don't eat it. Right, we're losing the light now, so it's uh, time to go back. Uh, I'm going to take my jelly of fungus and see if I can sneak it into our mince and taters that we're having tonight. You've just learned all about the elder tree in winter. I hope you found it useful. Now it's over to you. Have you ever come across a particularly stunning elder tree out in the wild? Or perhaps there's a bit of ancient elder lore I've missed out that you want to share? Well, you can include all that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it and so would our community here on YouTube. And of course, it really helps our channel out if you give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel too and share it with others who would also be interested. And of course, you'll get updates with more videos like this. And if you want to know more about identifying trees, then I actually have an online tree ID course. It's called the Complete Tree ID course. And there's a free taster version of the course available if you follow the links in the description. Well, thanks again for watching. I appreciate your time and happy tree hunting. See you soon.